Hi, Marta. How are you? I am fine, thanks. How about you? Pretty good. Thank you. How long do you think it takes to become a native speaker? Good question, but in the wrong place. You were not born in an English-speaking country. Your childhood was not spent in an English-speaking environment. Why do you call yourself a native speaker? Because I went to an American school where everyone only spoke English from the age of six or even five, if I remember. And then I also lived in a English-speaking country for five years. And now I speak English every day at school and with other people. What conclusion can we make? If you cannot spend at least six hours a day in an English-speaking environment, for example, at school, where you listen, answer, do written assignments and communicate with friends during breaks, unfortunately, you will never become a native speaker. But... If you listen to at least one episode of our podcast every day, you will never forget the language. Because we select news about everything in the world so that you are not bored and the vocabulary includes all aspects of a human life. It's true. Let's start. And our first news of the day is U.S. President Joe Biden says he would consider personal sanctions on Vladimir Putin if Russia invades Ukraine. Mr. Biden said there would be enormous consequences for the world if Russia made a move on the nation, which sits on its southwestern border. Enormous? Very big. So, enormous consequences it's very big consequences yes his comments came as other western leaders repeated warnings that russia would pay a heavy price for invasion what does it mean heavy price how price could be heavy if you look here if russia invades then the consequences or their punishment if you will will be very strict so a heavy price it's like high price so that means that the consequences would be big enormous <laughs> that the consequences would be big or that there would be a big uh, punishment involved okay thanks mm -hmm. russia has accused the us and others of escalating tensions over the issue and denies its plan to enter ukraine However, Moscow has built up troops at the border, with some 100,000 Russian soldiers deployed in the region. Taking questions from reporters, Mr. Biden replied yes when asked whether he could see himself imposing sanctions on the Russian president personally in the event of an invasion. And invasion its the second time when we meet this word in mm -hmm. this news what is this invasion invasion is when one country or one army attacks the other by moving into it on their territory mm -hmm. so in this example russia say that they're not going to attack and go on the territory of ukraine but biden does think so he said such a move across Ukraine's border would mean enormous consequences worldwide and could amount to the largest invasion since World War II. Mr. Biden added that he would feel obliged to beef up NATO's presence in Eastern Europe. Stop, please. Beef up? <laughs> what, what is meat doing here in news? Beef up. Well... <laughs> in this sentence, 
it says that Mr. Biden added that he would feel obliged to reinforce almost NATO's presence in Eastern Europe so that there would be more of it, kind of to accelerate or to reinforce NATO's presence in Eastern Europe, specifically Ukraine. But he repeated that there were no plans to send U.S. troops to Ukraine itself. Uh, do you have any comments on this news? If I'm not mistaken, doesn't Russia do this practically every year since, uh, I don't know? 2014. Not at all. It started at 2014 when Russia invaded Ukraine. And now I think Russia just play games mm -hmm. with US and with European countries because Russia doesn't want that Ukraine join the NATO club. Mm -hmm. Right. Our next news of the day is 5G near airports. Telecommunication companies stopped turning on new 5G t service towers in the US. The reason was that towers near airports could be dangerous for planes. Last week, airline officials sent a letter to many politicians. In the letter, they said that 5G could affect sensitive devices on planes. For example, altimeters. Altimeters is? A device that measures to see how high it is above the ground, the altitude. Mm -hmm. It's measure the altitude. Mm -hmm. And altitude is? How high something is. So how high the plane is. So altitude is a distance between us and sea level. For example, if we say the altitude is 1000 meters, it means there are 1000 meters between us and the sea level. Yes, exactly. Sea level is like zero. Mm -hmm. Thanks. It was not clear how many towers will be turned off, but some people worried that it would be necessary to cancel thousands of flights. Some international airlines already cancelled many flights to and from the US. US officials said it was necessary to solve the problem quickly and permanently. And what is permanently? Always and forever. So they want to fix or to solve this problem forever. Mm -hmm. So that we don't have to constantly find a way to solve it. So they started with turning on all 5G service all around the world. And In the US, not the world. But 5G now it's everywhere. <coughs> and all countries with 5G service very proud of this. Because 5G means very nice service for mobile network. It, it does, but also here it only talks about the US. So we yes. don't know if the other countries have turned off their towers or... I'm astonished that because of this, many flights were cancelled. It's very serious. Yes, I never knew that something as simple as a service tower could affect something as important as an altimeter that measures the altitude of a plane, which is really important. On to our next news. This news is a bit funner than what we usually have. Pizza making record. 400 chefs in Buenos Aires. So chefs, it's like boss? Cooks. Ah, chef, it doesn't mean boss? No, that's a chief. Ah, chief is a boss, a chef is a professional cook? Yep. Thank you. So as I was saying, 400 chefs or cooks in Buenos Aires, Argentina, teamed up to make pizzas together. They wanted to beat the world record for the most pizzas made in 12 hours. 
Whoa. <laughs> I have questions why people want to do something like this. Why 400 people team it together to make more pizza than previous team. Okay. They had fun, I hope. They used three tons of flour. Flour, it's it's flowers. There's flowers, like you have roses or pink flowers, and this is flour, which is a white material. It looks a bit like sand, and you use it to bake cakes, bread, or in this case, making pizza. So this sounds similar, flour and flour? Mm -hmm. They're homophones, which means that they sound the same, but you write them differently and they have different meaning. Okay, so we should understand from the... Context. Context. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. So they used three tons of flour, 2.7 tons of cheese, and 88,000 olives. Who counted these olives? But okay. <laughs> Why not just round them up to 90,000? Okay. They also used... 14 industrial-sized ovens, which baked six pizzas a minute. Industrial-sized. An industrial-sized oven is a very big or large oven that is only used in factories to make pizza. Because if you're making pizza at home, you don't need something that's used in a factory. But because here, they made so many pizzas... I'm sorry. Did they do frozen pizza or ready-to-eat pizza? They made fresh pizza by hand. So that means okay. that they made the dough, made the sauce okay. and okay. the toppings. Why did I ask? Because I can't imagine what the restaurant uh, needs industrial-sized oven that can bake six pizza a minute. I don't understand what the restaurant needs this industrial sized oven, but okay, okay, they used. In the end, they beat the record by more than a thousand pizzas. They made 11,287 pizzas. I can imagine how people around were happy <laughs> to receive free pizza. Yes, but also. I'm pretty sure because there were 400 chefs, by the time that everyone took home a couple of pizzas for their families, there weren't much left. I think after 12 hours of preparing pizza, they literally fed up with pizza. <laughs> I think so as well. But by the way, what is fed up? Fed up? Fed up. It's when you're very annoyed with something. It's not like you eat something on the altitude. <laughs> no, that'd be eating up. But fed up, it's something that you annoyed. Mm -hmm. And our next news is also about restaurants. The history of the Michelin star. In the 1890s, brothers Andre and Edward Michelin started a company which made tires. Tires? Tires, yes. A tire is a rubber ring on a car's wheel. Ah, I understand. Thanks. In 1900, they wanted to support their business, and they came up with an interesting idea. By the way, where are they from? This André and Edouard Michelin. They were French uh, creators, and their company is actually located in central France in a city called Clermont-Ferrand. In French, Clermont-Ferrand. Mm -hmm. They are French. They are French, yes. And they started this business in France. Mm -hmm. Okay. The brothers wrote a book with information for drivers about where to get gas and where to eat. They thought that it would make people drive more. And then they would sell more tires. The idea worked, but not as well as they expected. In 1926, Michelin started to give stars to the best restaurants. Today, restaurants can get up to three stars, and inspectors rate five different things, including the quality of food, 
cooking techniques and the chef's personality. There are thousands of restaurants which have at least one Michelin star, and they are from more than 30 countries. I it's, never knew. It's very interesting. I never knew. I, of course, I heard about Michelin stars. And about Michelin tires, but I never thought that those were connected. It's not the news, but it's just interesting fact. And yes, sense. It's very, it was very interesting. Sense a lot. Uh -huh. And on to our last piece of the day the day the biggest diamond was found. Africa is a place where people can find really big diamonds. Something very special happened on January 25th, 1905 at a diamond mine in South Africa. Why you tell 05? When there's a zero in front of something, you can say 05 because it looks like an O. Could it be official 1905 or 1905? Well, everyone that I know says 1905, but okay. you could, it, I guess it is more correct to say 1905. Mm -hmm. During a normal working day at the mine, about six meters underground, one man saw something very shiny in the wall above him. Shiny? Something that is shiny is full of light. And mine. What is this mine? A mine is a deep hole in the ground where people find things such as gold, silver or diamonds even. But usually mine is about coal, no? It's usually for coal. But sometimes in Africa or in other places of the world you can find things that are even more valuable. And six meters underground it's not big mine. It's very close to the surface. Because I know that uh, coal mines are very deep. It could be kilometers mm -hmm. under the ground. It usually is. It was the largest diamond in the world and it weighed 0 0.6 kilograms. The diamond was bought by a local government in Africa, which decided to give the diamond to the King of Britain as a present. The king was worried that the diamond could be stolen in transit from Africa to London. So people sent an official diamond with many guards on the ship. They also sent the real diamond in a simple box. The trick was successful. When the diamond arrived in London, somebody had to cut the diamond. What does it mean, had to cut the diamond? Well, cutting diamonds is a very special job. It is science and it's the activity to cut up things into smaller things. So in this case, they'd just be cutting diamond, this big diamond into smaller diamonds. And what's the problem to cut the diamond? What do you mean? It's a really hard and scientific job. Okay. The gem cutter studied the diamond for six months before he started his work. Who is gem cutter? A person who cuts diamonds or other stones. So gem it's about diamonds and other yes. stones. Mm -hmm. Okay. The diamond was cut into nine large stones and about a hundred smaller stones. The value of these stones is millions of dollars. It's very interesting and I like that this gem cutter studied for six months before he started the work. It's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, this is it for today. Yes, this episode has come to an end. We will be happy if you press button like under this episode. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast. Also, you can ask questions and write comments under each episode. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.